I can say place where two or more bones they meet and they articulate with one another is called as joint. The study of joint is called as arthrology. A very important term. If somebody asks what is arthrology, just say it is study of joints. So you are studying the structure as well as the function of various joints. That is arthrology. What is ligament? Ligament is something that is going to provide B to B. That is bone to bone attachment is provided by the ligament. How is the ligament in nature? I can say ligament is tough, fibrous, connective tissue. Ligament, what it does, it keeps bone at proper position. This is very important word. Bones at proper position. Your bones, if they are held in position, it is only because of ligament. And ligament avoids dislocation. If there is dislocation, then it can lead to fracture. What else ligament gives? It gives flexibility in rigid skeleton. It acts as a shock absorber. Most important part, ligament is going to act as a shock absorber. So if I draw one bone and I draw another bone, so this is bone to bone basically. So the bone, bone to bone attachment like this, what you can see is nothing but it is the ligament. The one that is going to provide attachment from bone to bone. So remember B to B attachment is nothing but it is the ligament. Uh, when I talk about classification of joints, there are three types of joints that we need to study. First is called a synarthrosis, which is fibrous joint, or even it is called as fixed joint. Even if I want, I can call it as immovable joint. Why it is immovable? Because it is fixed fibrous joint, synarthrosis. See, when I use this word syn, basically, syn itself means fused. So here everything will be fixed, no movement as such. Second is amphiarthrosis. It is just known as cartilaginous joint and it is slightly movable joint. So I can say it is little movable. It can move, but not that much. So it is little movable. When I say amphiarthrosis, the word amphi basically means both. So there is a movement of bones little bit at the same time they are stiff also. And the third one is called as diarthrosis. Dia means through. Through means there will be throughout movement. It can move the way it wants to move. Synovial joint, it is freely movable. So I can say it is maximum movable joint. So there are different different areas in your body where these three types of joints are present. Synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis and the diarthrosis. Remember synarthrosis is fixed, amphiarthrosis is slightly movable and diarthrosis is freely movable. Like when you do bowling, you rotate your hand, the shoulder 360 degree. That is because of only diarthrosis. When I talk about synarthrosis, the word syn means fused. When I say arthrosis, it is basically joint. So the joints which are fused, they are called as synarthrosis. It is a fibrous joint. Bones are united by thin or dense white fibrous connective tissue. See, whenever we use this word white fibrous connective tissue, it is concerned with the word that is called as collagen. It means the white fibers are nothing but collagen. Remember, white fibers are collagen. And there is one more fiber to study that is yellow fiber and yellow fiber will always be elastic. We, it is a fixed joint. So there is no articulation. I can say there is no movement as such. So such kind of joint is called as synarthrosis. The line of fusion is called as sutures. Now sutures are found only in skull. Wherever you see the joints in the skull, those are called as sutures. Sutures of the skull, these are called as serrate suture. Why they are called as serrate suture? If I draw one skull just to make you things easily understand. So here you will see all these zigzag lines. And these zigzag lines, they are dividing the basically skull into different different parts. So these zigzag lines, they are called as sutures. It is found in flat and curved roofing bones of the skull. Articulating surface shows serrate margin. The word serrate means like this, zigzag. Types of sutures. Very first we have coronal suture. We all know that in the skull there will be different different lobes present. So which we call it as frontal lobe. Then there is a parietal lobe. There is occipital lobe and there is a temporal lobe. So in that same way, there will be sutures present that will divide these lobes basically. So there is first one is called as coronal suture, second one is called as sagittal suture, third one is lambdoidal suture, fourth one is lateral suture. 
the point here is where these sutures are present the coronal suture is found between frontal bone and the parietal bone so i can say between frontal bone and parietal bone what you get is the coronal suture so this suture i can call it as coronal suture sagittal suture is between the two parietal bone so between p and p you will get sagittal suture so here there is a parietal which is divided into two so it is called as sagittal suture lambdoidal suture is present between parietal and the occipital bone so between p and o between the parietal and the occipital bone so this suture that you can see is nothing but it is lambdoidal suture the lateral suture is present between temporal and the parietal bone so this is the temporal and the parietal so this suture i can call it as lateral suture so remember we have coronal suture between the frontal bone and the parietal bone sagittal suture is between two parietal bone lambdoidal suture is between the parietal and the occipital bone lateral suture is between the temporal and the parietal bone so these are the different sutures that you normally see in this skull what is the age for suture formation so it is always at the age of 2 not initially why so remember when the baby is young the brain has to grow in size so logically there is a small gap left behind these gaps they are called as fontanelles fontanelles are nothing but small gaps and these gaps logically what they do they provide space for brain to grow so since the brain will grow up in size then these sutures basically the fontanelles will also expand and finally at the age of 2 remember at age of 2 all these fontanelles will get filled up and there will be formation of sutures that's why if you remember if any young baby is born the mother basically of that baby till 2 years of his age or even more than that she apply lots of oil on the head portion why because of the fontanelles the fontanelles are present so it apply so there is different fontanelles we have posterior fontanelle then these are different sutures lambdoidal suture in young skull basically leaves how many gaps six gaps very important question for neat these six gaps are called as fontanelles and these fontanelles they give space for brain to grow so here you can see these are the fontanelles so we can say 1 2 3 4 5 and the 6 so there are six fontanelles present called as anterior fontanelle posterior fontanelles and these fontanelles most important they allow the brain to grow your brain has to grow up in size so if the brain is growing in size it is purely possible because of these fontanelles fontanelles are nothing but the most important opening that will help the basically brain to grow in size this is very important part and uh, what if the fontanelle is not filled after 2 years of age then it will get filled up by 3 years of age but it will be filled up for sure let's talk about the next part this is the suture structure so when i look at this these are the two bones in between them there is a fibrous tissue present and this fibrous tissue joins a tumor so there are different types of suture first is called as butt joint butt joint means square edged look at this this is square edged suture these are found in two nasal bones then there is a scarf joint scarf joint is tapering so it's like this they are tapering they are pointed so that is scarf joint it is found in various skull bones we have lap joint it is overlapping so you can see here this is the first bone and the lower and the second bone they are overlapping each other so it is a lap joint it is found in temporal and the parietal bone then there is a serrate joint serrate means the zigzag one the irregular one that is called as zigzag serrate irregular or interlocking it is found in various skull bones so there are different types of sutures we have butt joint scarf joint lap joint and we have serrate joint so these joints are very important to understand and the examples are very important let's understand the next fixed joint that is called as syndesmosis syndesmosis is made up of fibrous connective tissue that connects the two bones example is tibia and fibula remember tibia and fibula is in the category of fixed joint they never move at all they are fixed in their position so here you what you can see is syndesmosis the gap in between this filled up by introsus membrane so look at this this is tibia the big one fibula 
then we have introsus ligament that is holding the part this part is nothing but the radius bone so we have this as the ulna the bigger one basically the fat one is called as tibia and the thin one is called as fibula so this tibia fibula radius and ulna remember tibia and fibula radius and ulna they are not showing any kind of movement so basically it is one of syn arthrosis but in this syn arthrosis which type it is so i can say it is syndesmosis and the word syn means few so it is nim movable joint the next example is gomphosis gomphosis is related to teeth see your teeth is fixed in a socket and that socket is basically called as jaw and this teeth which is filled up in the socket it is not going to move it is fixed in its position and the reason why it is fixed so that there is a kind of syn arthrosis formation of fixed joint formation taking place so such kind of teeth which is fixed in a jaw they are called as thecodont teeth means it is fixed in socket so the root of teeth the it's not the roof it is the root of teeth which is fixed in a socket of jaw bone look at this this is our teeth that is visible from outside but this much is entered inside the jaw so this what you can see here this is the crown the visible portion the one which has gone inside is the root so these are all examples of fixed joint they never move so this becomes gomphosis so remember teeth basically it is going to show the example of gomphosis and gomphosis is a fixed joint so this is gomphosis this is a socket and we have our the root of the tooth then there is a ligament called as periodontal ligament that will hold it in position and finally gomphosis here there will be gums also so these are basically they are called as gums also so gomphosis is a type of fixed joint so in fixed joint first we saw sutures of the skull then we talked about syndesmosis that was tibia fibula radius and ulna then we talked about gomphosis which is teeth and the socket we are moving toward amphi arthrosis amphi basically means both so i can say it is slightly movable most important and it is slightly fixed so it shows very little bit of movement that is called as amphi arthrosis so it is a type of you can say it is a cartilaginous joint it has cartilage it is neither fixed nor freely movable remember amphi arthrosis neither fixed and it is not freely movable line of fusion between the two articulating bone is called as synchondrosis very important word like in syn arthrosis the line of fusion was sutured but here the line of fusion of two articulating bone is called as synchondrosis what is synchondrosis the connecting material is hyaline cartilage we all have studied in animal tissues that hyaline cartilage is the weakest cartilage so syn arthrosis very soft elastic and it has minimum strength there is a plate seen that is called as epiphyseal plate so what this epiphyseal plate does so first of all it is present between epiphysis and diaphysis of long bone so if i draw this as the long bone for example just to understand so this area this area basically is called as epiphyseal plate and this above area is called as epiphysis and the lower area is called as diaphysis so between the epiphysis and the diaphysis of long bone you will see epiphysial plate it is a temporary joint in case of children that's why when children are holded in hand it they should be holded with uh, you know handled with proper care otherwise their bones can easily dislocate so this blue line that you can see is the epiphysial plate and this is epiphysis and this is diaphysis these are the different types of synchondrosis so very first example that we have is the epiphysial plate which has having hyaline cartilage second one is the sternum we all know that this is sternum and these are the ribs so they are attached to each other so joint between the first rib and the sternum is immovable this one the first rib and the sternum is immovable rest all they are slightly movable then we have symphysis in symphysis we have vertebral bone this is nothing but your vertebral bone seventh thoracic 
सॉरी सेवन सर्वाइकल ट्वेल्थ और ऐसे फाइव लंबार फाइव सेक्रल एंड वन कॉफिक्स दे ऑल आर सिंपाइसिस बेसिकली स्लाइटली मूवेबल सो इन सिन कॉन्ड्रोसिस यू कैन सी हियर दीज आर ऑल एपीफाइसिल प्लेट्स ये अपर एरिया इस कॉल्ड एस एपीफाइसिस एंड द लोअर एरिया इस कॉल्ड एस डायफिसिस वी हैव द नेक्स्ट वन सिंपाइसिस सिंपाइसिस वी कैन हैव प्यूबिक सिंपाइसिस एस वन ऑफ द मेजर पार्ट कनेक्टिंग मटेरियल हियर अगेन विल बी फाइब्रो कार्टिलेज फाइब्रो कार्टिलेज इस अ काइंड ऑफ यू कैन से स्ट्रॉंग कार्टिलेज फाइब्रो कार्टिलेज इस ओपेक स्ट्रॉंग फ्लेक्सिबल ड्यू टू प्रेजेंस ऑफ व्हाइट फाइबर एंड दैट व्हाइट फाइबर इस नथिंग बट इट इस कॉल्ड एस कोलेजन इट इस प्रेजेंट बिटवीन टू प्यूबिक बोन्स वी ऑल हैव स्टडीड पेल्विक गर्डल सो हियर देयर इस अ पेल्विक गर्डल दिस इस आल्सो देयर आर टू बोन्स इन द पेल्विक गर्डल व्हिच इस मेड अप ऑफ थ्री बोन्स बेसिकली इलियम ischium and pubis we have ilium ischium and pubis so these two pubis bone basically they are joined at this point and this point is called as symphysis which is called as pubic symphysis pubic symphysis is not functional in male but it is functional in female it allows a very slight movement in female what role it plays you know it increases the size of birth canal so that the baby's delivery takes place very easily for easy parturition the pubic bone has to stretch a little bit otherwise it will become very difficult for the baby to take birth so in female pubic symphysis is functional but it is not functional in case of male in male it is of no use look at this this is called as pubic symphysis so remember this is pubic symphysis and what we have here this is the obturator foramen very important part these three bones this is what is called as ilium then we have ischium then we have pubis so ilium ischium and pubis they all join together and finally they form a cavity here this cavity where this bone is fixed you know it is like this So this area is all cavity. So this cavity is called as acetabulum. One of the important cavity that will provide place for femur. Your leg bone is going to fit in this cavity. So this is pubic symphysis, functional in case of women, not men. Intervertebral joint. Joints are present between the centers of adjacent vertebrae of backbone. So remember this. Connecting disc is fibrocartilaginous. Remember, so it helps in shock absorption. Somebody hits you on the back, the shock will be absorbed because of this cartilage. It protects the spinal cord. The vertebral bone protects the spinal cord. It makes the spinal cord bit flexible. You can move little bit up and down. See, if you move in this direction, this area gets suppressed. If you move in this direction, this area gets suppressed. So. it allows slight movement not that much then we have the most important joint that is called as dia arthrosis dia basically means you can say through or you can say freely these are freely movable joints the joints which are freely movable they are called as dia arthrosis there are many joints present in dia arthrosis the very first let's talk about this it is a synovial joint why synovial joint because it is filled up by a fluid that is called as synovial fluid even it is called as perfect joint it is the most evolved freely movable type of joint just remember this most evolved and freely movable type of joint diarthrosis in your hand if you see the thumb there is a saddle joint then there is a hinge joint that is elbow even there is a pivot joint that is your skull so these are all freely movable they move You can say more than ninety degree. Any bone that moves more than ninety degree, you can say it is under the category of diarthrosis. We have ellipsoidal joint that is your wrist bone. Basically, it is also synovial joint, ball and socket joint, your hip joint basically, then the gliding joint. These are all different types of joints that we need to study. Let's talk about very first and the very important joint that is called a synovial joint. this synovial joint it consists of certain important parts so if i draw a synovial joint a typical synovial joint i can say 
it has a bone first there are two bones present on the bone there will be a cartilage so these are all cartilage the, this cartilage in a pad are very important because if they gets get dissolved basically then what will happen here the two bones will combine with each other and when two bones come join to each other it results into huge joint pain now this is the ligament which is providing bone to bone attachment and then finally we have this this is the synovial membrane and this synovial membrane is going to form a cavity that is called a synovial cavity and this cavity is filled up by a fluid what is this fluid called as it is called a synovial fluid this is how you can draw a very typical diagram for synovial joint you can say this is bone again we can say this is bone this is nothing but ligament providing bone to bone attachment and on the surface of bone what you have you have cartilage then there is a membrane very important one called as synovial membrane the synovial membrane is responsible for producing a fluid that fluid is called as synovial fluid this fluid consists of very special enzyme called as hyaluronic acid so remember there is hyaluronic acid present and this hyaluronic acid will help in providing nourishment to this cartilaginous pad and this is how all the synovial joint will be so let's understand this synovial joint consist of synovial cavity synovial fluid synovial membrane capsule ligament so it has synovial cavity synovial fluid synovial membrane capsule ligament and last articulating surface which is covered by hyaline cartilage let's look at this this is the diagram for a typical synovial joint first what we need to understand this is bone this is also bone both the bones are attached to each other by the help of ligament so bone to bone attachment is ligament then on the bone what you get you get articular cartilage and that articular cartilage is nothing but the hyaline cartilage then there is a covering called as synovial membrane this synovial membrane contains a cavity that is called a synovial cavity and the cavity is filled by synovial fluid very important word and finally fibrous layer synovial membrane together make articular capsule so this is how a typical typical synovial joint looks like so this is the simplest form of synovial joint that you can see we have the bone we have the cartilage we have the ligament we have the synovial lining basically then we have the synovial cavity which is filled by synovial fluid so this is a typical synovial joint same thing here same diagram representing again in a different way joint capsule synovial membrane joint fluid hyaline cartilage and the epiphyseal bone so these are different types of joints that we normally see so this is a cross section of real human where the hand bone was cut this is hand bone and slice was taken so this is synovial joint let's talk about the very first synovial joint so when i talk about very first synovial joint it is ball and socket joint the point here is when i say ball and socket joint what exactly it means so the ball and socket joint basically it is like one bone is going to act like a ball so let us take this to be the ball and the other bone will be acting like a socket so it is like this so one bone is acting like a ball and other bone is acting like a socket that is what is ball and socket joint so the sphere of the head of one bone fits into the cup shaped socket of other bone so i can say this is the sphere of one bone and this is nothing but the cup shaped socket of another bone these joints they are prone for easy dislocation they can be easily separated or broken so under accident it can lead to fracture separation on sudden strain if you give a sudden strain to it it can lead to separation it shows multi axial movement multi axial movement means the ball and socket joint will show either 360 degree movement or 180 degree movement 180 degree movement is in the hip joint because you can move your leg only 180 degree in a straight movement basically but shoulder will show you 360 degree movement because the when you do bowling that is a 360 degree movement so 
so this is the first ball and socket joint between the humerus and the cavity that is present in the scapula what is this cavity called as this cavity is called as glenoid cavity so in scapula there is a cavity that is called as glenoid cavity and this cavity is occupied by this humerus head and finally it forms a joint that is able to move like this 360 degree that is what is ball and socket joint very first we have the next one femur so now femur is they are leg bone so this is the head of the femur which is going to fit into the cup shaped cavity see this space that is there here this is all filled up by specialized fluid so this red area i can say it is filled up by synovial fluid so this is ball and socket joint where there is a pelvis bone which is acting like a ball so we need to remember here one thing very important that this bone basically it gives you understanding so this is ball and socket joint and it is very it shows 180 degree rotation very important like for example if this is your leg just for example i'm drawing one leg for you so this is your leg you can just take your leg up to here or at the max you can bend it till here you cannot take it till here so it can show only how much degree we can say 180 degree of rotation nothing else not more than this hinge joint hinge is like you see a door so on the door there is a hinge for example your hand this shows a hinge joint so you can move your hand till here straight or at the max till here straight it means it shows only 180 degree of movement remember one bone is of spoon shaped surface of one bone fits into the concave cavity of other bone so one bone will be spoon shape and other bone will be of concave cavity it has a strong collateral ligaments and they are not prone to easy dislocation just remember this it resists dislocation that is hinge joint hinge joint always shows uni axial movement means it moves in one direction example we have hand bone that is elbow and the knee cap knee cap shows such kind of thing so here in the diagram you can see there is humerus and the ulna and the hinge joint is seen so when i talk about this look at this diagram now this diagram will help you to understand actual hinge joint so here we see humerus that is the hand bone we have the radius and we have the ulna ulna has this process which is spoon shaped so this process what you can see here it is called as olecranon process and this olecranon process allows the movement now you can move your hand only in straight this way so it shows only 180 degree of movement nothing else we have this diagram hinge joint so look at this radius ulna we have the cartilage so here you can see there is a bicep we have the tricep we have the humerus the joint capsule basically with the synovial fluid so this is hinge joint as uh, showing 180 degree of movement so just remember this let's talk about the next one gliding joint now when i use this word gliding it simply means that the bones basically they are gliding on each other so the articular bone in gliding joint it permits for gliding or sliding like we all have window sliding window so this sliding window slides over each other so then that same way the gliding joint also will show such kind of joint these joints they allow non axial it means there is no access to the movement which is neither back forth nor side to side but it is irregular so it is going to show what irregular movement it will not move front and back or side by side it will show any irregular movement that is gliding joint the articulating surface is convex and since it is convex the best part is the friction is avoided example the best example is intercarpal joints how many carpals are there we have know that there are total eight carpals these are the examples of gliding joint look at this these bones they are gliding on each other this is called as gliding joint so this is the carpal says carpal number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so there are total eight carpals so in between this area the two lines so i can say 1 2 3 4 
another one, two, three, four. So like this, between them, whatever joint is there, there is called as gliding joint. It moves. Next, we have something called as condyloid joint. Very important. These are also called as ellipsoidal joints. So when I say ellipsoidal joint, it means what? One bone will be oval shaped. The other bone will be elliptical shaped cavity of other bones. So it is called as condyloid joint. These joints allow biaxial movement. These joints basically they allow biaxial movement. That is forward, backward, side to side, but not rotation. In condyloid joint, there will be forward movement. There might be backward movement. There can be side by side movement, but there is no rotation. It means you cannot rotate that joint which is condyloid joint example for this is radius carpal metacarpopharyngeal joint these are the examples of condyloid joint so let's take a look at the diagram condyloid joint you can see here there is a radius then there is a carpal and the metacarpal they show condyloid joint this is gliding joint between the two bones condyloid joint is seen between radius and the carpal. So look at this. This is the radius. There is articulating cartilage surface, then ligament bone to bone attachment. This is the cavity that is called as synovial cavity surrounded by membrane called synovial membrane and the carpal. So this joint that you can see here, this joint is called as condyloid joint. It will show forward, backward, side by side movement. But most important in condyloid joint, there is no rotation. You cannot rotate it. Next, we have saddle joint. Saddle joint is like when you see earlier days, Rishi Munis, they used to carry something like this with them. And this is a saddle basically, on which they used to keep their hand and do meditation. So articulating surface of bones are saddle shaped. That is each bone has concave and convex area. Each surface is convex in one plane and concave perpendicular plane means what? If I draw this like this, so the other bone will not be placed like this. It will be something like this. So it is at 90 degree to each other. It allows greater freedom of movement. Like for example, your thumb humans evolved more because their thumb became free. They developed opposable thumb and this opposable thumb allowed them to do greater movement. So joint allows what? Biaxial movement, front and back. Example for this is carpo metacarpal joint of thumb. Saddle joint has great evolutionary significance as I told you. Because of the separation of the thumb, we are able to move things properly. There is a great grasping power of fingers. Uh, we developed a skillful work like writing, drawing and painting. Without thumb, you cannot even hold a pen. And if, even if you hold a pen, you will not be able to write continuously for longer duration. So this is also a, one of the important joint, saddle joint. So it is thumb, trapezium and the metacarpal. Look at this, how they are placed. One is placed like this, other one is like this. So they are placed at 90 degree to each other. That is very important part. We have this, the first metacarpal bone and we have the joint of the thumb and there is a trapezium. So we have carpal. So remember saddle joint is between the first metacarpal. The first metacarpal is nothing but your thumb and the trapezium. So this is your metacarpal. Look at this. It is having this way cavity and the other bone is placed like this. So they are placed at 90 degree to each other. So this is saddle joint. The next and the last joint is pivot joint. Most important that pivot joint is freely movable joint. And this pivot is seen in case of skull. So if you remember, there was atlas and axis. The atlas is fixed to the skull, but the axis moves. What was present in the axis? So the axis was showing a process. This process was called as odontoid process. And because of this process, what happens? The skull moves. 
and most important this is your atlas so on this the skull is placed like this so you can with your skull either say yes or you can say no nothing else articular surface central bony pivot then surrounding by osteo ligamentous ring here one bone remains fixed while other bone rotates freely around the pivot shaped process of fixed bone so it is allows uniaxial movement by the help of skull you can say yes or no it shows a rotation example of this joint is atlanto axial joint atlas moves along with skull around the pivot like odontoid process i told you in the axis you will get odontoid process and that process will help to move so the joint allows rotational movement of the skull so you can rotate your skull but you cannot rotate 360 degree 90 degree only you can touch your chin from one end of the shoulder to the other end of the shoulder nothing more than that so this what you can see here is the atlas the first one the lower one is called as axis axis as a process this process is called as odontoid process and finally this is your skull remember skull is basically fixed on the atlas so atlas will show no movement no movement means it will move with the skull but axis is going to show movement this is called as pivot joint only one is example is there that is atlas so this pivot joint example what we have it has odontoid process there is a spelling mistake it is odontoid process and transverse ligament atlas and the axis this is the example for pivot joint we have the next important one muscular movement now when i say muscular movement it is connected with the word muscles we all have studied in animal tissue chapter that there are three types of muscle one is called as voluntary muscle second one is called as involuntary muscle and the third one basically is called as cardiac muscle so there are three types of muscles involved voluntary involuntary and cardiac so muscular tissue is characterized by very important property that is contractility the muscles has the ability to contract remember muscles can only pull but they cannot push so three types of movement we see voluntary movement involuntary movement and cardiac see voluntary movement is shown by skeletal muscle this is very important part when i say involuntary movement it is shown by non skeletal muscle so it is non skeletal muscle and cardiac movement is seen in case of heart so the heart muscles are shows this kind of